강남 기준으로만 계시면 돼요. 아, 교수님 안녕하세요. 혹시 제 목소리 들리시나요? 네, 잘 들립니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 캐리스 고등통생교육부 윤환선이라고 합니다. 제가 오늘 또 교수님 발표를 포함해서 사회를 맡은 영광을 또 지게 돼서 감사드립니다. 뭐 네. 간단하게 그냥 뭐 간략하게 그 진행 방법 말씀드리자면은 우선 네. 첫 번째 발표시잖아요. 근데 또뭐 네. 저희가 혹시라도 그런 뭐 테크니컬 이슈 같은 게 발생할 것을 고려해서 한3 지금이 현재 시간 26분인데 한 32분에서 33분 정도에 네. 시작을 해도 괜찮을까요? 아, 네, 이렇게 해서 뭐 컨퍼런스 그냥 간단하게 뭐 이러이러한 주제로 컨퍼런스 진행을 하고 또 우리 첫 번째 발표는 또 이제 누구 누구다 이런 식으로 진행을 이제 제가 소개 멘트 하고 또 교수님 뭐 이제 소개 멘트 한 다음에 진행을 하면 될것 같고요. 그리고 시간을 보고 혹시 우선은 제가 알기로 20분 정도 발표가 준비되어 있는 걸로 알고 있는데 네. 혹시 만약에 시간이 조금 남으면은 뭐 그러진 않을 것 같지만 뭐 중간에 그러니까 발표 끝나고 질문 하나 드리던가 아니면은 뭐 마지막에 이렇게 질문을 드리는 식으로 하겠습니다. 네. Hi, um, Dr. j u n a i d i can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear you. Uh, perfect. Clearly. Thank you. So this is Hwan Sun from Keris. I will be hosting yep. the um, webinar this afternoon. And we have, so uh, I was just explaining to Dr. Namgi Park. So we'll be, um, the time now is 27, 1.27 in Korea. three minutes before 1.30, but uh, just to make sure we do not have any technical issues, we will be, uh, hold on, uh, Dr. j u n a i d i can you give me 30, 10 seconds? Uh, because we have another uh, presenter connected, so perhaps I should.
I thought this pandemic will end soon, but since it still go on, become worse. It makes us worry about it. How about Philippines, Esther? Is it okay over there or become worse? No, I think it got worse. <laughs> <laughs> I see. 저희 시작하도록 하겠습니다. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon from Korea and to wherever you may be uh, with us right now. So my name is Hwan Sun Yoon, and I'm from Korea Education and Research Information Service, CARIS. And we, are, we have been serving as the secretariat for the AC ASEAN Cyber University Project since 2016. So let me, or me, I have the honor of welcoming you to today's ASEAN Cyber University's International Conference under the theme of Leapfrogging the Challenges of Higher Education During COVID-19. So thank you again. So um, this afternoon, I have the pleasure of sharing with you five different cases or strategies which will be shared by various, a various uh, group of players across the education field and um, they include governments, universities and from the collective side and from the um, individual side we also have stories shared by instructors and learners themselves. So um, I, I'm anticipating that we will be able to share experiences and um, different perspectives, different um, insights on how these different players have been responding to the suddenly, uh, the, the sudden demand towards online education, which we were compelled to turn to in the face of the coronavirus. Um, and for the people that are um, connecting us right now, just to inform you one more time, so we are, we are joining you via um, YouTube streaming, and we have the chat room box open, so please, please, I strongly encourage you, and I please, I request you to please kindly leave any questions or comments you would like to share it with the presenters or with um, the ACU project in general. And um, especially if you are residing in Korea, I believe um, we may be sending you a um, coffee gift icon to thank your participation. So please feel free to leave any messages in the YouTube chat box. So without further ado, uh, let us proceed right away with our first session. So I would like to invite you to pay attention to Korea, where Professor Namgi Park from Gwangju National University of Education will share with us a number of Korean um, initiatives that have focused to roll out online education amid the sudden crisis. And before that, let, if, uh, let me briefly introduce you to Professor Namgi Park, who is currently um, Professor of Gwangju National University of Education and was also previously the president there. And Dr. Park has spent um, over 30 years on researching on the field of comparative and international education, educational administration and reform. And uh, just an additional information, so Gwangju, the city where uh, Dr. Park is located, is one of the regional hubs who is currently acting um, right now in Korea as a regional hub to support the sudden um, demand for online education in the higher education field. So uh, without further ado, please, Nam uh, Professor Park, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Uh, it is great honor for me to have chance to share my experience and Korean experience. Uh, I put the title here as the triumph over the challenges of higher education during COVID-19. And I say triumph because we got something and without uh, COVID-19, we might have this kind of changes, but because of uh, we owe to some, in some part to the COVID-19 and we can change and adjust rapidly to this uh, new era. So I will talk about this one from now on. 
And like you see here, uh, this is the channel, like when you see this one already it's quite uh, different, right? So uh, this is any set, the virtual studio. These days, even the television station, they don't have any uh, set anymore. They use this kind of virtual studio. Then there's nothing but as if you are in some place. So I'm using this virtual studio temporary with you. Okay, let me go to the... So first I will tell you what's going on in Korea during COVID-19 in higher education. And second, I will talk about Korean government's efforts Korean governments really spent a lot of money, invest and do something. So I will talk about that one. And third, I will talk about forced online education experiment. I say here forced because we are not ready and suddenly we have to do it. And in the end, in some part, we are quite successful to adjust. So I want to talk about that one. And finally, I will tell you about the new model of high education. I named it small level education. So like you see here, the empty lecture room, it really nobody there anymore during the time. And uh, we used a lot of edge tech technologies. And like you see here, so when I wanna tell you that in the first time last March, uh, when we begin, uh, we government suggests there are three types of distance remote education. First one is real time interactive teaching lecture and third one is learning management system uh, video so we uh, upload the video and they count it as a lecture and third one is provide materials plus homework and also uh, is considered as kind of lecture and at the beginning real-time interactive was around 50 percent and uh, uploaded video lecture was around 30% and the just material plus homework was 20%. But now government and the Korean society, they say upload just video is not counted as a lecture anymore. So what you have to do is even though you put on your video on the YouTube or LMS system, still based on that one, you have to do lecture. So almost all lecture become real-time interactive lecture. So we usually, as of now, around 70% of them use a Zoom system and other Google, whatever, this kind of things. And when you go to the next, here I want to show you higher education students' university life satisfaction. This was last year's, but still, uh, they quite satisfied instead of unsatisfied level. Is low and the reasons for satisfaction when we asked them they said save time to go back and forth to school it's almost 60 percent so they just can be home and they really enjoy and what we worry about now is now students don't want to come anymore they just want to sit on their home so we are spoiled too much that's what i want worry and second thing is uh, here uh the re minimize contact with people. So they seek of like the keep like their conflict or what. So some of them say, oh, I don't have to see any others anymore. So they like it. And the reasons for dissatisfaction was low quality lectures uh, conducted by online is quite high. But during uh, COVID-19 period for two years, lecturer professors, the skill really increased and uh, their the quality increased a lot. So people love it, begin to love it. And as of now, because of all these kind of changes, around 70% of students and professors want to have online teaching and learning even after COVID-19. So when I ask my student, especially graduate school case, my university now will open online graduate school program instead of offline because all the teachers or students who live far away from universities, come and go, it takes two hours, three hours. So they said they prefer to have online teaching and learning. So we will change that way. And like I tell you later, government allow that. Korea case, we are under strong uh, control of the government, the central government, and they make all rules and we and they control us, but they make it like the, they change it now so we can do whatever we want. So I will tell you about it later. So about the Korean government's efforts, the first thing what government did was they, it made University Distance Education Center, we call it UDEC, 
in your case, you know, when you see that government spent uh, around $15.6 million, and we have one main center in Keris, and there are 10 local centers. And the, what they did here is establishing LMS infrastructure in each local center for local universities. So they do these kind of things. So many universities has their own LMS, but there are many universities also who doesn't have their own LMS because they don't have enough money and what those kind of situation. So like you see here, uh, until last June, we found out that um, this uh, UDEC uh, provide lecture uh, saving stories. So around 118 institutions join and uh, around 6,000 lectures the, uploaded over there and student uh, around six, 16,000 students each month, they take credits from there. So this UDEC is quite something, right? And also it's support for distance education content creation. So in UDEC, each province, it has a studio and live video lecture room and professional staffs to support those kind of activities. And also support for making and sharing lecture videos. So they support when you make it, they support and when you want to share, uh, they support it. Also, it's support for vitalization and quality improvement of distance education. So based on that one, uh, distance education become quite popular and quite well done. And here policy to support distance education of university by the government. So like you see here, the rules for distance education was before COVID and after COVID, before the government say, opening online courses, online credits is less than 20% of total credits, but now no limits. And online credit students that students can take is should be less than 20%, but this one also no limit. And before this kind of things under the MOE's guideline, but now it's university self-regulations, means you can do whatever you want. So this is a really big Glass in some parts of universities and some kind of things that we have to adjust. And here also government support for making and sharing lecture videos. And here, like you see, support for vitalization and quality and improvement of distant education. Also governments do these kind of things. And forced online education experiment last March, we are forced to do it without any preparation. So before this COVID-19, even the government keep pushing us, make your lecture like the video and the, put on in the internet, but I never did at all. But as of now, in two years past, so I put a lot of my lecture in the online, in the YouTube or other LMS. So I say it's a open new horizon. So improve the adaptability of professors and students to the online education and improve skills on online device usage and of, they are forced to open lectures to the public. So before professor, they close their windows and doors. So nobody knows what's going on inside the lecture room, but now they videotape it and they open it, they share it. So everybody can know who do what. So this kind of things is possible. And increased interest in on and offline teaching methods and classroom management and student guidances. So here, what I do is I'm the, uh, present chair of Korean Educational Administration Society. So I the offer to all professors that make your own lecture video, five to 10 minutes, small one, short one, and let's share. So everybody put on in this special LMS. Then when you have lecture, you don't have to do lecture. You just can take it out and let the student can see it. If for example, about this leadership Nam Gi Park is the best lecturer, then we'll see his. And, but show them the lecture, like the, or sharing those kind of video doesn't mean lecture itself, I told you. Because for example, we have uh, now ebook means electronic books. Even though we give the ebook to students, we don't say, I did lecture. Ebook has their video inside too. So lecture is different from just give them the uh, video. 
So I will talk about that a little bit more later. And here, so I will tell you my hybrid instruction experience that this is uh, on and off mixed instruction, like that means sometimes we do offline and sometimes we do online. So when you see my video here, let me show you just quickly. Uh, for example, this is the one that I have. So this is a real time lecture and I so my students there and those kind of things. So, so all these kind of things is going on here. So, so this is part of so this, we do this kind of things. Okay, then let me stop it. Okay, let me go back to my PowerPoint. And also when you see here, mm, upload video lecture uh, and offer teaching materials. So, so this NSS system is quite convenient. You just videotape then you just no need to convert it. You just can put on upload to the internet and flipped learning. So I use a Korean quiz system, quizen.com that show. So uh, before class, I offer the text and textbook and video and all students should read and see, watch my lecture and when class begin, then I give them quiz for 10 minutes. So it was quite easy to do these days. And students and professors are spoiled too much by online teaching system. We enjoy too much. So students say, professor, please don't ask me to come. Just let me stay in my home. Sometimes they say that. So this kind of things. And we have online exam control towers. So during COVID-19, the examination is quite another issue. So many universities have now this kind of control tower so they can control even though you take exam in far away, remote way. And uh, here findings and gains from first online education experiment. The first one is the blurred boundaries between offline and online education institutions. We have cyber universities, but now even offline universities offer many online programs. So the boundaries become blurred and experiences that only offline education institution can provide. So what I mean is now we find out, oh, only offline campus can do these kind of things. So when students begin to come, we focus on that more instead of like, the, not like before and increase confidence to meet the diverse needs of higher education from non-traditional students. So through this online system, we could do that. And the role of higher education, the relationship between higher education and society, all these kinds of things become smooth and better through online system. And, uh, but also weak points of each university is revealed. So we find out and we try to change it. And so the new model that I want to suggest is a smaller university, I say, uh, offline university with professors plus online system. It's kind of like the before, like, you know, here, this Minerva school. When I see this Minerva school, we think it's an online university, uh, but actually it's not virtual online university. It has a lot offline programs. So I call it smart log education, smart plus analog. Use all kinds of smart de devices, but we do that analog style, face-to-face -face in university. We use our offline campus instead of just to online because without offline campus, there are many things that we cannot do. So let's use this, our offline campus, but not like before. So a smart log education is teaching and learning, and it's a blended learning and offline plus online classroom lecture room. So in, even though in the lecture room, not like before, before we just have professors and students and just some kind of one computer, but now we use many uh, AI programs and virtual programs, this kind of things, we do this kind of things and provide various kind of uh, offline experience. So, we try to offer seminar, lab, uh, club activities, dorm programs, sports, social and cultural experience. Uh, by offering this kind of things, we can do better than before. Before, actually, we don't focus on that too much. Not at all. I mean, not, not at all, but we don't focus on that one. But now we found out that is the one of the main role of the offline campus. So we really focus on that one. And here, 
ways to organize to respond to COVID-19. Uh, this one is offered by Mac McKinsey uh, and it says the COVID-19 Nerve Center is about students, teaching and research, faculty and staff, and campus operation, finance and legal, and external communications. So this one is quite good model. So I offer you this one to share. And the final thing that I want to talk, tell you is the support for vulnerable students. During this pandemic, we found out there are many vulnerable students and they need, we have to support their living expenses even for the poor students. And the other thing is the, the university and society should be concerned about financial and psych Classical panic of students. So in Korea, 20, uh, the, many of them in depression. And so we try to give them psychological support. And professors try to contact one by one by online, I mean, the, by phone or by Zoom or whatever. So we try to check are they okay or do they any, need anything? So uh, during this online education, professors' role be, become more not like before, now you have to contact one by one and have to check their even psychological uh, situation and if you have any financial problems, those kind of things. So this is what I want to tell you. So uh, here briefly, I tell you about Korean government's role and, and what's going on inside the classroom and what should be the new model. So this is what I want to tell you. Uh, thank you very much too have chance to share with my you with my my ideas thank you very much thanks so that was professor namgi park from gwangju national university of education so who shared with us the um, triumphs or lessons that they acquired over the past 2 years of this sudden distance education so just to uh, point out a couple of points for recap so again um, Dr. Park introduced one major governmental initiative called the University Distance Education Center, which is serving as a network of 10 um, regional hubs across the Korean uh, country, providing hardware support and software support, uh, which was also backed up by uh, relevant uh, laws and regulations on accrediting online classes, which in turn gave, uh, was able to give more autonomy to the local universities in order to conduct online education. Then Professor Park also shared with us the concept of um, smalog education, combining smart and analog, so, uh, expanding the boundaries of the physical classroom to the online space, providing learners uh, various experiences not only in, uh, not only within the online. Uh, space, but both, uh, but also continuously in the physical environment as well. And and he also finally shared with us that um, the concept of giving a lecture is naturally changing for us to think again about. So thank you again. Thank you very much, Dr. Park. Um, so. Um, this time, let us move over to Indonesia, and we would like to share with you one more governmental initiative that has been implemented to roll out online education from a governmental perspective. So um, we have with us this afternoon Professor Aris Junaidi from the Indonesian Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology. So um, as a brief background of Dr. Junaidi, um, Dr. Janaidi currently serves as Director of Student and Learning Affairs at, uh, at the Directorate General of Higher Education, Research and Technology, again in the Indonesian Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology. So um, prof uh, also a professor, Professor Janaidi has been serving various roles which stretches from being a research scientist to education attache and to the director of education and quality assurance. So again, uh, may I now invite Professor Aris Junaidi to share with us the government strategies in boosting online learning in Indonesia during the pandemic. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much uh, for the chance. It's, uh, 
uh, honor for me to be here to give a talk uh, about our new policy and uh, boosting the online learning in Indonesia. So good afternoon, everyone. And I would like to share our PPT uh, just uh, for short uh, time. I would like to introduce uh, the government strategies in boosting online learning in Indonesia during the pandemic. Uh, first, uh, first of all, that uh, our government uh, put the regulation on the base on the joint decree of uh, our foreign minister, uh, number one, uh, 2020. At the time, it's dated on June uh, 15, 2020. This is regarding the guideline for the implementation of the learning in 2020-2021 uh, academic year and 2020 and 2021 academic year during the coronavirus uh, disease uh, pandemic uh, period. This, re uh, this regulates the implementation of the online learning during the pandemic. So based on that uh, uh, joint degree, we would like to share uh, about our strategies. The first one, I would like to talk about the online training uh, for lecturer. And the second one, we publishing the booklet online learning. And also we uh, improving. And also uh, uh, Indonesia MOOCs, we call SPADA uh, Indonesia. So uh, during the pandemic of it, and based on the joint uh, ministerial uh, degree uh, for minister uh, about the implementation of the online learning. And then we uh, have um, what we call it uh, uh, training uh, for the lecturer. Uh, in 2020, for example, we've got 107,054 lecturer attending this uh, training. This training is actually uh, uh, only for uh, better understanding how to preparing the module, uh, how preparing the material online uh, uh, learning, and how uh, to be uh, effective uh, for the lecturer to give the online uh, learning for the student. And then uh, in 2021, again, we also uh, give a training to our lecturer uh, and the number is around 5,189 uh, lecturer attending this training. And this training here is uh, we inviting the many experts on online uh, learning, online teaching. They all the expert here will give the training to uh, around uh, 120,000 uh, lecturer in Indonesia uh, attending this or uh, training here. Uh, during the 2020 and up to 2021, we also have the webinar seminar series with the Australian Embassy in Jakarta. And we inviting as well uh, on the expert uh, lecturer or professor from the University in Australia to discuss about our lecturer and also our uh, higher education uh, uh, lecturer to attending the seminar series during 2020 and 2021. And uh, also our new policy before we implemented the online learning uh, because uh, uh, in March 2020, our ministry uh, uh, asking or uh, have a, a letter instruction that all the student in higher a lecturer and student must work from home and study from home. We only not on then a policy, but also a providing with the free internet access the internet, and also sub subsidize from the tuition free for the student. So all the learning on the uh, what we call it online learning is provided by our uh, ministry for free for the student uh, from the lecturer they all given uh, a free access uh, internet through the 13 provider that exists in Indonesia. And also for the student, we also uh, provide uh, the subsidized 
for the tuition free. So that means uh, one semester is free and they got the access of the internet through the Wi-Fi of the internet. And then after the training, after the provided the, the funding for the student, for the lecturer, and then we also, uh, what we call it, um, publishing and the booklet, uh, online learning uh, booklet. So this uh, booklet here is uh, can be read by our student, uh, our lecturer, uh, how to implement it, the online learning effectively. So the content of this booklet is about e-learning design, a learning object, a learning assessment and feedback, and also organize the e-learning, uh, learning evaluation and learning facilitation. So this booklet is uh, like a handy book uh, for a student, for the lecturer uh, who work from home and study from home and um, optimize our SPADA or Indonesian MOOCs uh, uh, that we are provided. So uh, this is the Indonesian MOOCs that uh, we uh, uh, have. Yeah? Uh, we have a SPADA, it's uh, like a system pembelajaran daring or online uh, learning uh, system in Indonesia. We've got uh, access here that are free for our student and also for our a lecturer. The SPADA here, if we uh, have a number here, we've got uh, around 524 online courses. Also, we have a 1,288 open courses and 18,032 open content. And uh, in this uh, content here, uh, we have uh, provide uh, university around 582 but the partner university who joined with this SPADA or Indonesian MOOCs here is around 1,982. The total lecturer who access this SPADA is around 41,712. And the student that are active are using the open content or open, open courses is around 356,656. So the SPADA here is very, very uh, uh, useful for our student while they are uh, studying uh, from home using the online uh, uh, courses or open courses or open content. And this is also using uh, very actively by uh, uh, more than 2,000 university and access this uh, every day. Yeah. And the Indonesian MOOCs here, if we are uh feature feature of the spada here the one is indonesia high education institution learning management system uh, aggregator system so that indonesian high education uh, learning management system here uh feature and the feature that function to monitor learning activities or learning analytic in higher education institution uh, learning uh, management system for example the number of visitor uh, at the LMS, the number of courses, the most visited courses, and so on, we, we can uh, access uh, online. So we can, uh, real time, uh, we can access how many uh, today, for example, uh, the number of student access and the lecturer and so on. And also we facilitating the online course. So the SPADA Indonesia here is facilitated the university to organize uh, online uh, courses nationally. And we also providing the open course. As PADA Indonesia provide open courses that can be used by both lecturer and student to enrich their sources of material. We also providing the open content. So that means this open material is almost the same as an open course, but the open material is fragment of the whole material in a particular courses. We also have the online learning coaching service and the feature that can be used by lecturer to consult directly in the development of online learning content. So that means coaching clinic yeah, for a lecturer. So we are provide the online learning coaching services. The learning management system or content development assistance services is also provided by uh, us. So the training, uh, assistance services, and developing online courses content, or developing uh, 
uh, learning management system synchronizing academic system data with the learning management system. The e-learning grant management, SPADA Indonesia is also as a tool in the process of implementing the grant, especially for e-learning uh, starting from announcement, proposal collection, assessment, and reporting. So we, we provide this. So that means the lecturer or student very easy uh, to see uh, uh, what the grant that we offer by uh, through this SPADA. We've got, uh, at, at every year, we've got allowed about 15 type of grant that uh, can be uh, competitively applied by lecturer or student. For example, uh, innovation, uh, uh, learning material, for example. We give uh, the grant to our lecturer who can uh, develop the innovative uh, learning uh, material. And uh, any other type of the grant, we uh, have uh, around 15 uh, type of the grant to support or, or to add on the material that we can display on SPADA here. We also have the learning management system facilitation. That means that SPADA is also facilitated in Indonesia, higher education system that do not yet have the learning management system to use the learning management system feature in the SPADA Indonesia. And also Indonesia high education system clustering assessment. So as a system for collecting data on the assessment of higher education cluster, especially the implementation of online courses, the real time user uh, monitoring, the future that is used to monitor a real time, the number of users who are online uh, along with the origin of the user institution. So uh, the real time of future here, we can uh, open and then we know how many lecture, how many human university, how many students at that time uh, 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 using this uh, SPADA. And we have the new model that we just uh, launching uh, just a few months ago about the Indonesian Cyber Education Institute. We just launching uh, 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 recently and uh, this ICE Institute is a, is a marketplace, marketplace of online courses. So that means here that a student can easily uh, to uh, uh, shopping uh, the, the, the material on the module of the learning through this ICE Institute. The resources for e-learning is come from the high education institution for industry, for MOOCs, institution, individual, community, and right now is also come from uh, EDEC and Coursera and other MOOCs uh, that uh, are supporting the resources for this ICE Institute. And the student is very easy. Yeah, student can access a short the select a learning courses and then verify and curate a learning or digital courses. And then after that, uh, the, the student is enrolled in a course and to do the study. Uh, and then uh, reporting, uh, the system report, and then issues the certificate of accomplishment when the student uh, finished and passed these uh, courses. So that means by use this uh, ICE Institute as a model of online courses uh, marketplace in Indonesia, so that means give uh, flexible learning as our new policy here in the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology is we provide the flexible learning. So that means freedom of learning. So the student can anytime, anybody, anywhere can access equity, quality across time and space. And then they get a micro credential or digital badges, and they also get the certificate of accomplishment per online course. And this is part of the student, a part of the student uh, learning in the university, and they got the, the courses and the credit, and then they can uh, pass uh, for the study, for their study. So, and then the last slide here, we also, uh, our strategy is also collaboration of, uh, uh, with any other uh, ministry and any other 
uh, university overseas, and we uh, uh, push or encouraging our university to become a world-class university. We also are very welcome and also join uh, research and publication with the a well-known scientist, for example, and we also have the intensive industry, micro curricular development, a scholarship, university consortium, and also online uh, learning development during and post COVID-19. As I uh, presented uh, before that, we uh, uh, readjusted our budget, our funding, just uh, for the uh, development of uh, uh, online learning during the uh, COVID and uh, post COVID, uh, right? uh, and then the student and uh, staff exchange, and also particularly for uh, professor. So I think this is all that I can uh, share for today. So thank you so much for your kind of uh, attention. Uh, so I come back on uh, the time for uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. So thank you again. That was Professor Adis Junaidi from the Indonesian Ministry of Education. And um, sorry, Ministry of Research, Technology, and Higher Education. So, to go through a couple of recap points. So, first, um, Dr. Janaidi shared with us the role of higher education institutions in Indonesia, who I believe they would serve as the um, central acting body for the projects and policies in, in the Indonesian ministry. And he also shared with us. Uh, in that perspective, he shared with us different government supports that have been mainly um, provided in three aspects. So one, um, the first one would be empowerment through um, instructor and teacher training programs and support. And two, providing content. So he also mentioned the online learning booklet, which provided, um, I think it was a very holistic guide to implementing online education from the very uh, planning, designing, uh, implementing, and to evaluating, and also in the form of infrastructure, which he introduced the SPADA Indonesia, the biggest um, learning management system in the country. And I think he then, he finally shared with us the dedication of the Indonesian government to expanding collaboration, not only in institutional perspectives, perspectives, but also in individual levels, perspectives, so different exchanges. So um, I strongly encourage um, our viewers to watch out for upcoming uh, possibilities for exchange. So thank you again, Dr. Janaidi. So, um, our, so let us now move on to Thailand this time. So our third session is from Thailand, and as you may already be aware, Thailand is another country that is very um, actively acting from a governmental level on implementing mo uh, massive open online courses, MOOCs, from a governmental uh, perspective. So um, I think you, most of you will already be aware that um, the Thai MOOC platform is has been and is one of the biggest MOOC platforms which have gathered a uh, very wide network of universities across Thailand and also outside the country as well. So um, our third speaker, uh, we have invited um, Professor Anuchai Thirarung Chaisri from the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Science, uh, Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. So um, Dr. Uh, Thirarong Chai Sri also is currently serving as the Deputy Director of the Thailand Cyber University Project, or the TCU, which is initiated by the Thai Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation. So um, you can see that um, he has currently, he has been and is actively involved in the Thai MOOC project and the academic credit bank system development as well. So um, today, Dr. Thirarong Chai Sri will share with us um, on the topic of key activities to support higher education during the COVID pandemic and beyond. So again, let us welcome him with a warm 
a round of applause virtually, and please, the floor is yours. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you, the ASEAN Cyber University Project, for the opportunity uh, to Thailand Cyber University to, to let each other we share our uh, experience, our key activity to support the higher education during the COVID-19 pandemic and also beyond. Yes, my name is Anushai Thirang Chesi, representative from the Thailand Cyber University. Yeah. Okay, this is my presentation outline. Yes, okay, I can move on. Uh, first of all, I would, would like to uh, uh, explain more about the Thailand Cyber University project. Uh, we are found uh, in 2005 uh, and under the, we, we are work under the Office of Permanent Secretary under the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation. That, may, that I will call in short, MACI. And uh, our mission is uh, to initiate and support Thai higher education to utilize technology and to, to improve the quality of education in many, many projects. Also, uh, we are the central body of cooperative uh, among university to synergizing uh, the local university as well as the international university on online education, e-learning, and also the learning resources and knowledge sharing. This is our mission of the, the, the project. We have a long uh, journey now from 2005 until now 2021. Uh, we starting uh, try to encourage the sharing uh, open courseware among university. So we starting on 2006, uh, to recruit uh, experts from university to produce their uh, all, uh, courseware that uh, they use in their teaching and learning, in their teaching uh, process, uh, and to produce it as an open courseware and share uh, under the local, uh, learning management system of uh, the project. So uh, we totally we have 800 open courseware share among university throughout Thailand. So that, that is uh, one of the, the success project of the, the Thailand Cyber University. Uh, from now on, can I, uh, I would like to call TCU as the short name of Thailand Cyber University project. On 2015, uh, with the support from the government, uh, with the budget from the government, we found uh, Thai MOOC as a MOOC uh, courses provider platform is the first uh, MOOC course provider platform in Thailand. Uh, named uh, the the mission is to share uh, online courses among university, similar to the open courseware, but now uh, with a more uh, design and more uh, content. So uh, we uh, implement the platform on 2015. And then on 2019, we transform the, the MOOC course, courses provider platform into the platform provider platform. Uh, uh, because of uh, many uh, institutes and many universities, they produce their own uh, MOOC courses and to minimize the investment on the platform of uh, our university. So we provide the platform uh, university can uh, 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 provide their MOOC content, MOOC course in our platform for free uh, with our support. So in uh, 2021 and now, from the statistic, uh, we have uh, 1.2 million uh, learners registered to the platform. We keep, uh, keep out uh, 1 million certificate from the total 2 million registration to the to the course that uh, approximately allow 40 to 50 percent of the student success from learning. We have totally 500 courses 
uh, host in the Thai MOOC platform and uh, 120 organizations, including university, to participate. Uh, we we uh, get lots of recognition from the Cast Central that we are one of the country MOOC platform in 2019. I would like to elaborate more about uh, how we got the content from the university. Uh, we would like to uh, gain the content from the expert uh, from the expert in the university to our Thailand. So we work with the uh, university network. In Thailand, similar to Korea, we divide East region uh, and we have one major university, one big, big university in the region as a central uh, university hub. So in Thailand, we have nine regions of university network. So uh, in each region, we have uh, one major university uh, take care of uh, any operation among university in the region. So Thai MOOC, we work with the uh, networking, uh, univers university networking in each region. We work with the, the university that be the hub of the region. So we ask the university, the professor, to create the MOOC course uh, with the support budget from Thai MOOC. Uh, the category of course should be uh, content from their own teaching. That they think that is uh, useful and benefit to share to other and also some courses create from local wisdom to share to learner and also to people that would like to learn. Uh, for example, the, the, the food, the cultural, something. Yeah. And also some uh, 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 content that uh, are really uh, good to share. So all university uh, select category to share to produce the book courses. Many universities that uh, select the content from their teaching course that are very interesting and produce is at the MOOC courses. So uh, totally until now we have 100 universities throughout Thailand. Uh, we are the university network uh, share the MOOC courses uh, and also 20 uh, public and private institution, including other uh, universities from uh, other countries. So you can see from this page that uh, uh, this is the banner of the MOOC courses. You can see that uh, the banner was created uh, that to, to show the interesting. You can see that we have uh, many uh, area of content. For example, this is the data mining from the uh, computer science, science, and this is a uh, languages courses. This is uh, the health, health science courses, uh, and also uh, many, many area courses. From this slide, you can see that we encourage the university teacher, the professor to create the MOOC course, the MOOC course team to create the MOOC course uh, that uh, present the content in an interesting way, uh, we uh, encourage them to do a simulation, to do a, a outdoor uh, shooting, and to use the animation to make uh, the content more meaningful, and also many, many ways to present the content as an interesting and engage, engage the learner. So uh, come out, we have totally five hundred and five courses in different category. The uh, top category is the computer and technology. We have more than 100 courses. And we have uh, 73 courses from business and management, and also uh, 62 courses on education and training, and also in health science. And in, uh, so this is the, the, the statistic of the courses in different category, totally uh, 12. Similar to other countries, in Thailand, the first wave of the COVID-19 hit Thailand on the end of 
February 2020. So at that time, uh, Macy or the ministry announced to university to adjust the way of teaching and learning uh, to appropriate to the situation, but left the university try to decide and and uh, adjust the way of teaching and learning and also uh, open to the flexible way of education. Uh, many universities uh, find their ways to uh, address the crisis. Uh, Thai MOOC, uh, we, we work with the Macy and we uh, try to find a way to support the university and as well as the professor in the university. So we look back at our uh, uh, assets. We we learn we, we know that we have 505 courses uh, in the in the Thai MOOC portal that uh, can support the teaching and learning. So the ministry circulate to university that uh, you can use the MOOC courses as a supplement or complement or an assignment to the uh, learner. So to make the remote teaching a little bit uh, multi-mode, uh, they, can, they can learn from the professor via the remote presentation, or they can learn from the content in the MOOC courses uh, in a complement way. So make it a little bit uh, more interesting. Uh, so uh, Macy circulate to all university and recommend that to use the MOOC courses in, in the crisis teaching. Uh, from our observation in the statistics, uh, we try to encourage university to use the MOOC course and then the statistics show out that uh, a lot of uh, university and also the students in the university uh, come in and utilize the MOOC courses very much. Uh, from this slide, you can see that we have number of uh, learner registered to the Thai MOOC double the number from uh, 2019, it is to 2019, 2020, and 2021. We have the whole number of learners registered to the portal and more and more uh, in the near future. And we found that uh, we have the whole number of learners uh, learn and get uh, success from the course, get a certificate too. So this uh, show the statistic of utilization of the MOOC course. Uh, we try to add, analyze uh, the pattern of usage, and it confirmed that during COVID-19, web one, web two, and also web three, the uh, number of learner participate and, and visit the time MOOC web page, shooting every time the COVID web uh, hit Thailand. And also, we can confirm that the uh, behavior of the learner. Normally, the learner learn uh, the MOOC course in the evening at night time. But during the COVID-19, the learner, the student, learn uh, the MOOC course in their time. This is an uh, evidence uh, of the utilization of the MOOC course. So this is one of the way. This is the, the uh, statistic from the top course, you can see that the first top blank course uh, is the English uh, language for communication. We got uh, totally uh, 124,000 of learners uh, registered to the course, as well as other technology, uh, psychology, and also other languages courses. This is uh, one of the activity to provide the MOOC course uh, to the university and professor to utilize as a complement and supplement. Uh, as, as I uh, mentioned before that the MOOC course was produced very interesting way of presentation that can engage learners. So learning from MOOC is another way to, to, um, to motivate the learner to learn. The second activity that also very uh, success uh, we learn from the university and professor that uh, all university they find their ways to address to overcome the crisis. Uh, and, and we know that 
many innovative way of teaching and learning from the university. So uh, how can we uh, let them share the, the innovative way of teaching and learning during COVID via the remote? So we set the state uh, webinar, we set the online forum, set the online workshop, and to enable the knowledge, knowledge sharing among university and also the professor. We call time MOOC talk. We starting to do the time MOOC talk uh, uh, to 2020. And we uh, do a lot of episodes, we call episodes. Uh, every week, we invite the expert from university. We invite the expert from the industry. For example, Dr. Support come from at that time, he represented me from Microsoft and also many professors, Dr. Yen Pong from Konkan University, uh, Dr. Pavinya, Dr. Patalacha, uh, Dr. Nathapon from Chulangkorn University, uh, Dr. Enalin from uh, Silapakorn University. We take turn to invite uh, professors from university to share their innovative way uh, of uh, teaching during COVID and uh, come out very successful. Totally, we got uh, 243,000 uh, person participate. Uh, we that every time we the risk number of the participant in totally all time work talk. And interestingly, uh, for one, one topic of time work talk, uh, it, it, it is a teaching tools during uh, COVID. Uh, this is this uh, topic. We gain a lot of interesting. Uh, many participants participate at the, the real time, the online time, and also a lot of participants, the university teacher participate on demand. Totally, we have 133,000 uh, uh, view from, from all uh, professors or, or participants and 2,300 interaction. Okay. Uh, we go on to do the time MOOC talk in a very interesting way, more interesting uh, with the support from university. In this year, we, we set the theme as empowering next normal online education. So you can see, uh, we, we try to create the program online as a more funny. Uh, we keep the gimmick, we set the question, let the, the participant to interaction. So this is a way to uh, to engage the participant in our uh, online forum. You can see that we, we try to make the, the uh, 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 as most fair as uh, funny, not uh, so serious, so academic. We also interview the important person, the expert, and also we create the podcast for sharing uh, the knowledge from university, and we also uh, set the team that time move on to uh, to uh, interview to uh, invite the professor from uh, each university in the region to share their expertise, and also we set the the uh, conference online conference uh, and invite uh, expert from other country to share to to. Uh, disseminate the knowledge. So this is uh, the activity that we found. It not only uh, let the university to share uh, the knowledge, but also uh, make them more inspired. The professor that participate uh, in in the forum, they they inspire from the way everyone try to uh, try to find a way to do a uh, teaching and learning more effective and also make them more confident that to teach and learn uh, during uh, COVID-19 crisis. Okay, not only the, the uh, university uh, learner, but also the uh, uh, one who graduate that maybe have some problem about their, uh, their learning during COVID and their graduate. We, uh, we partner with uh, the U2T 
a one project of the Ministry of Higher Education to provide the, the knowledge to the one who graduate to let them uh, uh, fill the gap of their knowledge and also uh, let them have a good job. So this is one of the activity. So for the next normal activity, uh, we, we, we learned that in a new normal way, it should be a blended mode of learning and also the flexible learning path that should be utilized many way, uh, classroom and also online and also MOOC course to combine to, to become a learning path and to let the learner have the flexible learning path. But the flexible learning path should be combined to let the learner have uh, progress in their uh, degree and also their uh, professional uh, work. So, and also we learned that many, many universities uh, establish their own MOOC. So now we have a lot of MOOC in uh, Thailand. So uh, in the Thailand Cyber University, we try to cooperate to all MOOC platform and try to, to synergize our resources and to produce the, the, the and, and to provide the service to the, the university as well as the people to make, make effective of the education. So we synergize by three uh, strategy. First, we uh, contact the university and we try to uh, synchronize the more courses that provide by different platform to be a central one-stop uh, directory of MOOC courses that uh, enable the easily for the, the learner to find the courses. You can find the courses from every uh, platform. So uh, accessible very easily. And also uh, we can learn that how many MOOC courses in one area. And that let us know that uh, if you want to create new MOOC classes, what area that uh, have uh, very few courses or uh, what area that we should uh, add on more courses. And we do the roaming account. We ask the university, hi, hi, how can we uh, make the easier for the learner to log into our platform, our platform, our uh, participate platform with one user and password. Uh, and if, that have, uh, if, if they have many passwords, they uh, may be easily to forget. So we try to make a mechanism called roaming account and many universities uh, join us and uh, try to set the, back, uh, the, the system to allow the, the learner to use only university account and to log into to many uh, platforms. And also, this is the last uh, strategy try to encourage learning from many, many ways from the MOOC platform. And after they graduate from the, the courses, and then if they go to the, if they graduate from the MOOC courses, their record of success will transfer to the credit bank. But if they go to uh, test their knowledge in the testing center, their certificate will have more important into the level two. All the certificate that they got will be the e-profile of individual learner. They can show their profile to the university and they can continue to learning to uh, further their degree. So totally is the mechanism. Uh, we reset the, we, we can call that this is an ecosystem of learning and we uh, not only set in a time move platform, but we also invite university, invite the other uh, ministry that have the MOOC portal platform to participate and to to connect and create the big picture together. Okay. Thank you very much. I would like to stop here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so thank you again, Professor Anutai Thiradong Tai Sri. So again, um, this uh, presentation highlighted the Thai MOOC, one, again, one of the major initiatives of the Thailand Cyber University Project. So again, just um, uh, two points for recap. So we were able to um, see 
the network of national cooperation, which took place through nine higher education regional networks hubs. And I think I personally see this very um, strongly resembling the Korean, uh, the uh, University of Distance Education Center, which was previously introduced by Dr. Park in Korean. And we were also able to see the number of MOOC learners that have um, exponentially increased since the outburst of the coronavirus. And this increase is not only on the numbers of learners who have accessed the Thai MOOC platform, but also including the numbers of learners who have actually completed a, course, a specific course and have obtained a certificate in the platform platform so um with dropout being a very persistent issue in MOOCs I think we can hear more about this uh, in our later parts so um, we have uh, fallen behind a little bit behind schedule but uh, if you could kindly give us a couple of minutes for us to adjust our technical settings um, we will c the time right now in Korea is 243 so uh, if you could kindly come back before 2.50, so after a very short seven minute break, uh, which we will be adjusting our technical settings, we will begin right away with the next two presentations. So thank you, and thank you to the three presenters. Again, so see you after seven minutes.
Okay, so hello again. So this is Huan Sun from Keris, and、um, we have finished the early, the first half of our conference on the ASEAN Cyber University project with the topic of leapfrogging the challenges of higher education during COVID nineteen. So、um, the earlier we had before our break. Just to give you a brief recap, the three presentations were、um, very focused on the government level perspective. So,、uh, different kinds of example initiatives that the government、um, planned, developed, and rolled out, which included not only operating different MOOC platforms, but also different.、Um, Kinds of support, such as, for example, a、uh, network,、uh, a regional hub stretched out across the country, or different kinds of support networks in terms of sharing,、um, sharing or exchanging resources and insights. So, and so this time, the next two presentations, I think,、uh, we have a very more、um, personal perspective. So we will be now list,、uh, hearing、uh, some examples from the instructor and the、uh, and a learner, the actual learner herself. So I now have the pleasure of introducing you. Hold on. So, sorry. So I now have the in,、uh, pleasure of introducing you, Professor Nguyen Thi Hong Jiang. From the Hanoi University of Science and Technology, Vietnam. So, just for a brief background,、um, so Professor Jiang has been one of one very long and very close、uh, partner of the ASEAN Cyber University project. So, you will be able to、um, hear from her perspective. So,、uh, The actual、uh, case study on using the OER platform, which is actually currently being operated by the ASEAN Cyber University Project Secretariat. So, without further ado, let me、uh, in, let me welcome you to Professor Nguyen Thi Hong Jiang from Hanoi University of Science and Technology. Please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. A special thanks to ASA Cyber University Project for giving me a chance to share our experience of online teaching at Hanoi University of Science and Technology during COVID nineteen. And as you know, higher education institutions encounter difficulties when the COVID nineteen pandemic happens. Because learners cannot go to class and absorb knowledge directly, in Vietnam, university have used online learning to help learners keep learning in this pandemic context. However, students and teaching staff have expressed concern about the quality of the learning process, and my presentation will introduce. Experience of teaching at Hanoi University of Science and Technology, and a case study of using Asian Cyber University Open Educational Resource Pilot Class in teaching subject introduction to e-learning during COVID nineteen context. And my presentation includes five parts. How Vietnam education faced to COVID nineteen, and the second is digital transformation at Hanoi University of Science and Technology, and the third is online learning and teaching at Hanoi University of Science and Technology during COVID nineteen, and the fourth is a case study of using Asia Science Cyber University. Open educational resource for teaching during COVID nineteen, and we hope who's experienced in online teaching and learning, especially using ICR OER pilot class for teaching during COVID nineteen, will be a typical lesson 
for supporting the higher education system during the COVID-19 crisis. And we also hope to get response from Asian experts to discuss about our lessons. As you know, this is the advantage of a country uh, have a large proportion of people owning and using technology. Vietnam is in the top 20 countries with the highest number of internet users. And there are 49 million people connected to the internet. And there is 55% of Vietnamese people owning smartphones and 46% owning personal computers. So Vietnam is considered a bright spot for students to easily access technology in education. And in Vietnam, during the complicated COVID-19 epidemic, there were nearly 80% of students studying online and ranking the 17th among 200 countries and territories in the world. And the COVID-19 pandemic had a strong impact on teaching process, creating an inevitable trend of digital transformation in teaching and learning process. So, Hanoi University of Science and Technology considers digital transformation as one of the breakthrough solutions for fundamental innovation and international integration. And you can see that the digital transformation has quickly become a top priority for host. And as well as the digital transformation in training management, the digital transformation in teaching and scientific research activity is also highly valued by Hanoi University of Science and Technology. And, and in, that, in order to build the digital university model, Hanoi University of Science and technology has been equipped with the following facilities, infrastructure, uh, application of information and communication technology, such as multimedia classroom system, system of computer rooms, lab and workshop, traditional libraries with library management software system, virtual or email system of the school, student management software system, electronic training portal, training management software system, school wireless international internet access system, computer-based test assessment system, electronic library, digital learning materials, and basic software. And and now you can see who has simultaneously deployed the hardware system and software system to develop teaching programs to meet many different teaching conditions and requirements of, of students. And the context of the COVID-19 pandemic has profoundly affected Vietnamese higher education in 2021. Facing restrictions on contact caused by the pandemic, Schools are all using the convenience of information technology and commun telecommunication to deploy online learning and exams. And you can see at host, this process has some advantage. Firstly, the active effectiveness of Asian Cyber University projects since 2009. And we know the as the ASEAN Cyber University process has provided technical support and training to improve the production capacity of electronic lectures in the form of e-learning training, technology transfer, and annual basic 
and not functioning cost. It can be said that the Asian Cyber University project has contributed to promoting the application of e-learning in Hanoi University of Science and Technology. And then, as a result of the ASEAN Cyber University project, we deploy the project innovating teaching and learning methods by applying teaching technology according to blended learning. And then, now, we have another advantage for deploy online learning and teaching at host during COVID-19 is the host administration policy. And you can see now we have uh, within the digital university and do the project innovating teaching and learning methods by applying blended learning. And blended learning is a method of conveying content knowledge to learner by a combination face-to-face -face teaching in the classroom and a digital learning environment. And the goal of blended teaching is to improve the quality and effectiveness of learner through the flexibility and the convenience of online teaching while maintaining the advantages of traditional teaching in the classroom and blended learning is a flexible teaching and learning method that combines the technological, technological advancement of online learning with the interaction and participant of traditional learning. And with the support of implementing ICU project before and host administration policies, online class have partly met the process of knowledge transmission, connecting teacher with learners in online learning activity at Hanoi University of Science and Technology during COVID-19. And this is a type of synchronous online class via Microsoft Teams that allows students and teachers are available in class at the same time. In COVID-19 pandemic context, who's organize another online classes via blended class via Microsoft team and online class in Moodle learning management system. Especially uh, we uh, when uh, at the end of the semester course, we must make the online examination for evaluation of the online learning process. And we use Moodle with set the exam browser to help teacher make the quiz, check the student authentication, and help the student can take the online exam easily. And now, um, uh, when COVID-19 uh, happens, um, we use the ICU OER pilot class to make the blended class between the ICU OER LMS content and the and the online class on Microsoft Teams, and you know, also when using online. Asian Cyber University Open Educational Rost LMS. Now we can um, organize the blended class this easily. And the student can access her own content in the course of the LMS of the ICO OER. And when we have the synchronous class, we can use Microsoft Teams to have a uh, interact with students and teacher. And when we use ISEN Cyber University 
oh we are pilot class we must have a, a preparation phase for make a cost on like cost on a serve lms and do you know um we have a five step to prepare for Asia Cyber University OER pilot class. And first, when Asia Cyber University project code for ICOMS pilot class, first thing should apply the proposal template. And then, if I see a project give a notification and request for confirmation, for confirmation, cost team should confirm and give additional information. And then the third step is I see a project will set up the LMS space for the pilot class. And then the cost team must supply Google Mail account of costume and student in the class. And when the costume setting up is completed, we must ask students to subscribe to the ICO OER as login in the ICO OER platform. And so the student and the costume can log in and have a first look at the pilot class on ICO OER LMS. <clears throat> And in the preparation phase for ICO OER pilot class, the cost team can view the cost outline in studio mode. It is very easy for cost team can check the cost outline. And next, the cost team can view the cost outline for updating the cost content if it needed. And in and for updating the cost content, we can add sub six section for adding a new unit, such as discussion, text, problem, or video. And the discussion can be added for the cost in ICO OER pilot class, help student and teacher can communicate when online class deploy. And we can supply more text material for student in the ICO OER pilot class in the studio mode. And next you can see there are many types of questions we can add for problems in the course. And also we can add more video in the course in studio mode. And the updating the course content in ICO OER is very Ill easily. And in the studio mode, the cost team also can set the cost info, such as schedule and details, rating, cost team, group configuration, advanced setting, and certificate for the cost. And after we finish uh, the preparation phase for the ICO OER pilot class, uh, teacher and student can uh, use the pilot class for teaching and learning online. And you can see when we use uh, the ACO of your pilot class, cost team uh, can view the cost content in live view mode and can post discussion to interact with students in online class in view live mode also. Especially the cost team also can view the materials of the cost in view live mode.
and then um, when the costume want to view the costume for they can go to the instruct instructor that's more in view live mode to see many information about the cost When implementing the ICO OER pilot class, the cost team can view the student admin at instructor dashboard in view level mode to view great book for own enrolled student and view progress map for a specific student. And here the great book for enrolled student in my class in introduction to uh, in e-learning and we can see all of the um, grade for each homework when students finish this and also the costing can view the student admin for view progress by with a specific student. And next, uh, we can see that in the studio of the course, in the studio mode of the course, we also can download data about student to have uh, identified disease or provide information about the student. And when we use ASEAN Cyber University Open Educational Research Pilot Class, uh, we have uh, uh, the chance to make a flexible and a synchronous online class for teachers, create and update the course contents as well as students access the learning content easily. And in COVID-19 uh, happened, and when COVID-19 happened, uh, so students can go to the class directly. So we use Microsoft Teams based class for organize the synchronous lectures. So teacher and student can interact effective. So you can see we must the ICU OER pilot class with Microsoft Teams based class. Uh, for have a blended class and the blended class of ICU OER pilot class and Microsoft team based class and so the quality and the effectiveness of learning and teaching process during COVID-19. And I think uh, the ICU OER pilot class have uh, uh, many costs uh, to choose the content to help students uh, to access during the access learning content during the COVID-19. So we would like to thanks to ASEAN Cyber University project for give us a chance in making online learning class to help students and teacher cope to the COVID-19 pandemic. And we hope uh, our pilot class using Asian Cyber University Open Educational Research LMS is an effective online class during COVID-19. And that's all of my experience in online learning during COVID-19 at Hanoi University of Science and Technology. And we well, would like to say thank you very much for listening. So thank you again. Thank you very much, Professor Nguyen Thi Hong Jiang from Hanoi University of Science and Technology. So again, uh, just to briefly recap, so uh, we were able to see and witness um, the openness of Professor Jiang's university, which actually encouraged um, instruct 
different uh, professors to actively engage in innovating teaching and learning methods through blended learning. And I think this openness of the university level was uh, definitely one of the key factors that uh, encouraged and allowed uh, Professor Jiang to try out different, using different platforms, which included, fortunately, the ACU LMS platform. And so uh, we were also able to see a very comprehensive overview of our ACU LMS platform and also uh, witnessing uh, how Professor Jiang uh, created her online hybrid learning environment by integrating not only the LMS platform, but also the asynchronous and synchronous platforms in order to um, complement each uh, point. So thank you again, Dr. Jiang. And our um, last but not least, uh, which I am very looking forward to, so our next presentation will be shared by an actual um, student level perspective and um, just to briefly introduce you. So um, the ACU project secretariat is currently uh, has teamed up with a cyber university in Korea and is jointly uh, providing a um, online blended learning program in Korean language and uh, Miss Esther Abigail Perez um, from the University of the Philippines Open University is a participant of this uh, online Korean program which has lasted for the past four months and I think uh, she will be sharing with us this afternoon um, her perspective on not only uh, in this program but in uh, on distance education in general on her, on her insights and her opinions. So uh, again, please kindly welcome Miss Esther Abigail Paris from the Philippines. Please, the floor is yours. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor for me to speak in this conference. I would like to share the academic situation under COVID-19 through a student's perspective. During face-to-face -face classes, a high five or a hug from a friend would welcome me as soon as I stepped my foot on a classroom. Oh, sorry. Okay. A handshake from a teacher would congratulate me whenever I leave. I thrive on my academic tasks but a glare from a teacher would terrify me if I was caught using my smartphone during class hours. If you would ask me what school is like, I will instantly picture in my mind an institution packed with learners crowding a classroom, a hallway, or the school's cafeteria. As someone who's used to the face-to-face -face mode of education, I always associate academic settings with students. In fact, just the sight of an institution crowded with students uh, already more. Miss Paris, I'm very sorry to interrupt. Uh, would you yeah. kindly reset your presentation to a regular slide mode? Could you... Oh, I'm sorry about that. No problem. Um, if you could um, end your slideshow and restart okay. it, and then. If you, okay, much, that, but perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for the interruption. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, should I um, start my presentation? No, I think again, you or... can just uh, continue from where we left. Okay. Okay. However, the threat brought about by the COVID-19 transitioned the academic settings from buildings and classrooms to virtual spaces. What should alarm us is that while social interactions are beneficial to one's mental health, as reported by the Economic and Research Council in 2013, social isolation, on the other hand, triggers mental health. If I were to compare the education during pre-pandemic and under the COVID-19 situation, we could assume, or I could assume, that there is only a minimal difference. Though the academic settings differ, the number of tasks given and the number of hours spent on studying are the same. However, in addition to the difference in academic settings, what we, students, lost are camaraderie, a sense of community, and genuine affirmation. No longer do we face a whiteboard or a blackboard 
while eagerly waiting for the school bell to ring, awaken the life out of us, and be excited for the next class. No longer do we receive a gentle pat on the back when, from a classmate or a friend when academic life gets tough. No longer do we experience celebrating with our friends when examination week has passed. It seems like a virtual classroom has robbed students of social interaction. Online learn As an online learner, I couldn't agree more that the social isolation impacts my mental health. Having limited interactions with friends and classmates makes me feel disconnected from the society. Okay, another pertinent challenge I've encountered as an online learner is to concentrate and stay attentive in lessons for a long period of time while facing a laptop or a smartphone. When classes are still held in schools and classrooms, the use of any devices is strictly prohibited. I have no way of checking social media updates while, while the teacher is inside the classroom because just a simple glare from a teacher would make me feel nervous. For worse situations, my phone would be confiscated until my parents would be until my parents would personally acquire my phone from my teacher. Well, today, ironically, that prohibited devices during class hours are the, are the necessary ones to continue my education. However, if it was difficult to stay attentive during face-to-face -face classes, how much more is it today when devices are right in front of us and the social media platforms are within our reach? My stimuli to scroll through my social media platform would be more difficult to refuse when a message or a notification pops out. It requires a strong will to keep yourself attentive despite the temptations being right in front of you. Well, on the, other, on the other hand, if we would look at the other side, I could say that the mode of education and the academic settings under the COVID-19 instills discipline. It pushed me to be a responsible student and helped me build the right perspectives. It made me realize the focus on what really matters, which is learning. In addition to what I've learned, the current academic settings exposed me to different learning management system, which offers top quality lessons and courses. One of the LMS I've used is the ACU OER project. The system consists of many courses to which universities from the Southeast Asian countries contributed. I find it impressive because it offers top quality learning materials for underprivileged individuals who couldn't afford to enroll themselves in extracurricular classes, those who are too busy to attend regular, like to attend, to regularly attend classes, and those who just want to further their understanding of a particular course. So anyone who has a smartphone and access to the internet could benefit from courses published in the ACU OER platform. The system of o ACU OER is also easy to access and user-friendly. So whenever I feel like reviewing my lessons in Quick Korean 1, I can just go through the LMS and watch the videos. <clears throat> Sorry. So whenever I feel like reviewing my lessons in Quick Korean 1, I can just go through the LMS and watch the videos wherever I am. At first, it was difficult for me to access my lessons on Quick Korean 1 of ACU OER because the audio of the videos does not function when using a smartphone. Thankfully, the admins found a way to fix it and it made the system more convenient to use. Oh, in addition to that, I get to track my learning progress since the system includes a feature called My Learning Status where I can review my engagement with the course and grades on the previous tasks. Reviewing my learning progress motivates me more because it functions as a feedback on whether I am learning and thriving on my course. Whenever the system marks the tasks I've accomplished, I feel more motivated whenever I get a high score and I tend to dig deeper about the course I'm studying. Accessing my learning status is also easy because it is accessible 
through the dashboard where I will be directed after logging in. The system also puts automatically a check beside the video materials and tasks I've accomplished. I think this is useful, especially for students like me who usually forget the title of the lesson I've, I previously studied and the tasks I've previously accomplished. Without the system's automatic checker, I might go through each lessons and tasks ju just to find out what lessons or tasks I should take next. Another feature I've noticed in the platform is its organized and specific interaction boards. It separates the posts from announcements, community interactions, and queries. I haven't seen any posts on the announcement board, nor have I used the Q&A board, but I think it's a wise decision of the admins to separate important information from the community or social posts. Hence, infor important, hence, important information would not be ignored. I am particularly thankful to the community board because it connected me with my classmates in Quick Korean 1. It paved the way for new acquaintances with people from different countries. Though it's difficult to build friendship virtually, I'm still thankful that the platform allows all its users to interact with one another. <laughs> I am also grateful to the admins who warmly welcomed and affirmed us as we introduce ourselves in the community board and kindly respond to our queries. Thank you for your understanding and going beyond cultural boundaries. In conclusion, academic life during the COVID-19 situation could be boring, unfair, and mentally exhausting. But I can still say that it's worth it. It shaped my character, which I think is the most important aspect of being a human. It, it pushed me to persevere, discipline myself, and be resourceful. Furthermore, for me, it's the price of getting to know and being part of a global cyber university of which I am beyond grateful. It brought me into a new world. Thank you. So again, thank you very much to uh, Ms. Esther Abigail Perez. So again, to briefly recap, <gasps> um, as an actual uh, user and learner herself, um, she shared with us two major challenges in online learning, including um, the perspective absence of social interaction, which uh, in which the isol the sense of isolation may actually affect the mental conditions of the learner. And the second um, challenge or the irony in um, learning, in distance, not only in distance learning, but in learning in general, is the prohibited use of ICT devices in certain environments where, ironically, devices are actually needed to get engaged in learning per se. So, and, um, at, and finally, she also shared with us that um, the different online uh, online based programs such as the um, quick the Korean learning program currently offered by ACU project and the um, cyber University of Korea is an example initiative that is requiring requiring her as a learner uh, some sense of discipline as a social learner to currently not only engage in the teaching and learning but also interacting with fellow um, colleague learners and, uh, and instructors so again thank you for that very personal insights and opinions so um this is, so this marks the end of the presentation so we have fallen a little behind schedule but again so Thank you again to the five presenters from the five different regions across the ASEAN network. So uh, because we have had such a heap, uh, such a diverse, um, diverse spectrum of examples and exchange. So again, just to briefly go through a brief recap. So we began, uh, we began by sharing government-led initiatives beginning from the Korea 
which uh, newly established different regional um, distance education centers, providing different uh, support in terms of infrastructure, content, and uh, technical assistance in terms of personal assistance. And we also have the example from Indonesia, which also uh, provided a holistic support in terms of infrastructure, content, and um, personal support which was also um, show, um, shown as another example from the Taimuk example. And then we also, uh, after the three government national scale initiatives, we went down a little bit uh, personal, uh, sharing insights from the instructor, from uh, sharing the example of the Vietnamese uh, class, and also the uh, individual learner from the Philippine region. So again, thank you. So um, now uh, I would like to begin the discussion session. So uh, we have a guest with us this um, afternoon from the Lao PDR. But before we invite them, again, I would like to begin the discussion uh, by requesting the uh, the presenters to go through a brief recap of what they have shared with us. So let me begin by a common question. So um, I think this, again, uh, it may be uh, reiterating, but I think this is a topic that most of us are uh, would like to know more about is, so we have heard a lot about the lessons and the triumphs, the lessons learned from the past two years. So. Uh, as a professor, or as an instructor, or as a government uh, official. So could you, again, uh, briefly, kindly share with us what was the most imminent challenge that you faced in your environment, and, and which, in which you had to suddenly uh, respond to the sudden demand for distance education? So then shall I begin? Uh, yes, please, Professor Park. Okay. okay. Uh, at first, let's make it clear the terminology that we are using. Blended learning is a learner's point of view. Learn online and sometimes offline. So, for example, for seven, six days a week or five days a week, four days you learn through online, and one day you go to school and meet person to person. That is a blended learning. So, watch video is learning, not instruction or teaching. It's student point of view. And uh, so blended learning is like that. And there's other term in the instructor's point of view is a hybrid instruction. Hybrid instruction is usually for four days just offered by online. And one day they show off their face and we meet face to face. So that is the hybrid instruction. So we should make it clear and talk about it. And the small log education, what I say is, even though I do face to face teaching in the classroom, but we use all kind of education technology and online machines, everything that is the small log education, what I say. Anyhow, the challenges, we can say the two ways in the point of student and about the professors. Student case, when they are motivated highly, it doesn't matter whether online, offline, they really do their best. And even though I don't teach, just put on their, uh, the video, they can learn by themselves. But the problem is low motivated student. In their case, even though they sit on in front of me, I mean the screen, I can see them. You know, even there's a cheating. You, you can have the background, the picture, right? So they sit on as if you take my courses and take the picture and put it as a background, then they disappear and sleep. I caught catch one student who does that. And I call his name, please show up your face. And in the end, he show up. So uh, those kind of things happen. So this online case, the most hard thing is how to control, how to motivate them, how to make the participate in learning process. And uh, that is the, about the professor, the students, side and professor side also still many professors feel uncomfortable uncomfortable about using this kind of edge technology devices and machines and they still resist so that kind of things it will take a little more time and the third one is now student and professors are adjusted to this easy convenience online teaching and learning so when schools before the career case Students say, 
we need you as back the tuition because we don't go to school and we cannot use school facilities. So now government and school say, come back. And suddenly they say, no, no, it's okay. We'll just stay at home. So we are spoiled. And we still now, so what we have to do is we really have to check they really learn or they just choose the convenience. So that's the challenge that we have. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Park, on uh, ident pinpointing the different challenges in terms of student, in terms of learners, and in general. So I think, again, uh, as I think uh, Ms. Perez as mentioned earlier, um, the sense of um, interaction and motivation, I think, it again, uh, uh, we have to go back to that, uh, taking that as our main key concern in order for us to uh, plan and implement a successful online learning, uh, no, online or offline. So um, may I, so if, may I invite anyone to freely continue the discussion, please. Yes, Dr. Thirarong Chesri. Thank you, Tori. Today we have Professor Park uh, about the issue. And in addition, I would like to add two issues uh, that may be uh, uh, some problem in, in, in Thailand also. Uh, from the student uh, perspective, uh, when we change from the, the, the physical class to the online uh, university course, uh, students go back to their home. There are some, some problems in, in the uh, difficulty to, to access the internet in some area. So this is the, the uh, maybe the foundation of the learning with the online. So uh, not only the, the coverage of the internet, uh, we, we, we coverage all area, but the stable of the signal and also the equipment of the learner, they are some, some kind of different. So uh, in, in, in Thailand, the university try to uh, support and provide the device and also try to uh, find some area for the learner to, to come to learn. This is the, from the the learning, learning side and from the, the teacher side, uh, we have a lot of difficulty for the course that, that is a skill-based skill -based course, not the content. So we have to practice the learner. They have to go to the laboratory. They have, have to practice something to show the skill, to show their competency. But on the online mode, we cannot, we cannot do that. So this uh, come back to the professor, how can they overcome this situation? Because uh, COVID-19 did not, did not stay with that uh, short period, now maybe uh, nearly two years. So how to overcome uh, this uh, difficulty about the skill base? So the teacher have to try to think uh, some, some, some way, you know, innovative way of design. They try to uh, do a demonstration they try to uh, uh, do a new, new re uh, redesign of the content. They, they separate the intellectual skill, the way to think, the way to understand, the, the way to respond to, to the, the pattern of the, the skill practice from the, the skill practice. And then uh, we teaching via the online with the intellectual skill. But we hope that in the near future, we can, uh, we can uh, provide some special session for the student to do the practice skill. And in, in the uh, very advanced way, maybe we think about the sim simulation, simulation machine that can uh, help us to practice the student with the online mode also. Uh, similar to the, the, the airplane, the aircraft, the simulation, driving the air or driving the car, if we have that kind of simulation, maybe uh, they can support uh, and decrease the, the problem. But at any way, we still need to have time to practice the student in the in the laboratory. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Therong Chai Sri. So again, um, so to two major challenges. Again, uh, I think um, when we talk, think about the challenges, we naturally go back to the most fundamental issues. So again, uh, the first issue was on the issue of accessibility. So again, um, 
um, it is very, um, if you think about it, it's a very easy issue that, you know, when you just think about accessibility, we provide more uh, devices, we provide more infrastructure, but uh, does that end there? So does this issue of accessibility end just by providing more, uh, more computer devices or more LMS platforms. So I think um, that's just the uh, first and foremost issue. And again, when, when you think about the second issue pointed out on, uh, are there really, uh, can online education really teach all the skills? So, you know, uh, again, he mentioned some of the specific skills that still they believe needed to be taught in the offline laboratories. So, and, um, a uh, very interesting point about this point is that um, I have also seen uh, very new examples, for example, on um, physical education or specific skills that are being currently uh, taught in the online platform. So again, uh, from another perspective, when we think about it, perhaps there are also, uh, there are possible alternatives which we can you know, refer to uh, by using online uh, education. So thank you again for your insights. Uh, do we have any other, I would like to invite other presenters before moving on. Uh, yes, please, Dr. Jiang. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to introduce Dr. Huyen uh, in Hanoi University of Science and Technology to say her experience in online teaching during COVID-19. And uh, I have a, a special impression with the way she break the ice glass match in her online class to motivate her students. And please, Dr. Huyen. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zhang. <laughs> and hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Huyen, and I'm from Hanoi, Univ uh, Hanoi Sun and Technologies. Uh, um, as a teacher, I feel a lot of change in my life last year. Uh, since COVID happens, it changed the way I teach and I, it's also changed the way students in my university learn. As uh, I see the present, uh, the last uh, presentation from, from Ms. Uh, Pisa from Philippines, and I agree with all the agreement that you bring up, all the opportunities and difficulties that students face. And also, I uh, agree with uh, the first presenter, Nami Park. I think the most difficult the most difficult point in online learning is how to motivate students, how to engage students in the lecture. And for my case, for my experience, uh, since I uh, I switched from traditional teaching to online teaching, I have uh, to learn a lot of uh, I think the um, I learn a lot of things. I learned a lot of things from uh, how to use uh, like a teaching tool, how to uh, design a blended a blended lecture, and um, in uh, in last last year last semester I have. I got two class. Uh, got two soft skill class, and in this class, I have to uh, apply a lot of method to 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 gain a retention from students. I have to like sometimes uh, because when I look when I look in into in, into class, and sometimes I feel lonely because students all the turn off the camera turn off the video and sometimes I have to add them to uh, turn on the, the, the videos. And once they turn on the video, I feel the uh, atmosphere is glad in like much warmer. So I think the, 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 the point is students have to, uh, to see the other face and see the uh, teacher face. So I have to like uh, to organize some um, eye break games. Maybe, maybe like, 50 minutes one, 50 minutes one, after I teaching, like after, after teaching 50 minutes and I put a small game to, to regain the attention. And after five minute game, I continue my lecture. And after that, I have some like, uh, some discussions. And so I feel my class uh, during the COVID-19 uh, with online game, 
I like teaching uh, with I like game. It's much more effective for a student and as well for me, for my experience. Um, <clears throat> I don't know in the case, but in my case, I think the most important point is like we have to focus on students. Because you know that when, when you log in the system and you uh, see if student didn't like this is if student don't open their camera, we, we feel lonely, right? We feel like still like class like empty and uh, are they with me? Sometimes I have to ask, like, can you like clap your hand or can can you like give me a hurt? So I know that you are with me and I know that you are uh, you still 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 there with me. You still there in class. So as of at the beginning of COVID, I feel very stressed because I can see student video. I can see student fail, not like children in the class. I can see their uh, emotion. If they're happy with the lecture, if they're sad, if they like feel sleepy, I know everything. But for online learning, I know nothing. I just know uh, there are some there are some participants in online class, but I'm not sure like if they are um, like maybe if they are like having a uh, half dinner or they are uh, like have some meal and they are sleeping. I don't know because they didn't, they don't open the camera. So I don't know. So that's why like I have to, uh, <clears throat> I have to like uh, organize some game to let they open their camera and have discussion with teacher and have discussion with their classmates. So the atmosphere class will much warmer. And I think students, uh, and at the end of my eighth class, I always ask for the feedback from the students, and they always uh, give very bus uh, positive feedback. Like they love the class, they they think the class is like kind of fun, and they love the way that we motivate the other to learn. So not feel lonely they not feel like oh just uh, they are a teacher and teaching they to talk 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 no in our class we have um, we have a lot of funds although they are online learning they are just happy learning we have uh, we teaching like a uh, uh, psychonaut and a uh, psychonauts but they still feel like there are some classmates around you and we are learning together and we will get to together whenever if any uh, difficulty occur teacher on way there and classmate on way there with them. And also I, <clears throat> um, I also have a project, a project about like, uh, um, in this project, I also like um, create for students, we, we are like, but we were for teamwork because I think the teamwork or listen to to students uh, not only listen to the to the teacher but teamwork talking with other classmates talking a uh, working team like will motivate them to learn more and to uh, to uh, to get a better outcome in their learning so just so, just some of my experience. I know in my university, um, many teacher and culty like a difficulty during uh, teaching. They don't know how to use team. You, they don't know how to use like 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 some example uh, our MS systems. Some teacher they have a. Uh, they're not like a technology native, so it's kind of difficult for them. So I think uh, for researchers and educational, we should like we on, we also have to support for our teacher to learn more. The way to adapt uh, during the COVID nineteen. I think the. I think that is the, the important, uh, critical point during uh, 
19, uh, during COVID-19, uh, during COVID, yeah, COVID-19. <clears throat> um, just that, just my uh, experience uh, last year, I hope it has for anyone who are looking for a way to motivate their students to think about online game, think about teamwork and, and focus on the students that will like uh, uh, make your lessons, make the class more fun and more attractive. Thank you very much. If uh, any any comments, any questions, we can you to feel free to uh, Yes, thank okay, you. Uh, so thank you again, Dr. Huyen. So if um, from the way I understood your um, insights, I think one of the biggest challenges that instructors would uh, instructors are encountering is that all these pressures, you know, on requiring instructors to be familiar with the LMS, with the different platforms, and being able to, you know, it draw the attention of their students. And, but not being able to know the status of their students because they can't see them you know, in the actual uh, offline environment. So I think uh, the um, fundamental issue, one of the fundamental issue uh, according to what you've commented is that these uh, so much different pressures are requiring instructors to become a you know a solar performer you know being able to attract the attention the you know the participation of learners and having to be technologically savvy at the same time so i think that is why we need different uh, perspect uh, different uh, supports and different perspective not just you know in instructors being able to, in not just uh, assisting instructors to use different uh, platforms but also being able to help their interactions with students so um that was very insightful thank you and i think um dr junaidi was raising his hand earlier yes yes thank you thank you for the chance i would like to uh, respond from the three uh, big issues that uh, you are mentioning about the accessibility and uh, infrastructure and also learning outcome the accessibility here, uh, uh, this is the best practice in Indonesia that uh, due to the geographical uh, area in Indonesia, some of the remote uh, do not have access from the Wi-Fi internet. So to solve the problem at the moment uh, from the, the short term uh, uh, solution is uh, give the about 5,000 tablet uh, to a student. And the tablet is content the module module for for uh, studying yeah, for learning so uh, the student uh, by uh, offline they still can uh, uh, learning uh, from the material that we uh, install uh, in the tablet this is the first uh, one the second one uh, about the uh, learning outcome is not the study problem can uh, fuel a uh, daring at the moment so we uh, use the hybrid learning. So that means uh, for the practical matter, uh, we still allow with the uh, head protocol, they still can uh, doing the practical uh, matter. So this is we combine between the hybrid learning and also uh, some uh, devices that are for uh, the students. So thank you. This is uh, our policy at the ministry. Thank you so much. So thank you again, Dr. Janaidi. So again, uh, we do... Uh, need okay so when i think again um in specific in certain circumstances like the coronavirus um top-down policy supports can sometimes be proved to be effective and and in certain cer in certain geographical uh environments such as indonesia um so i think we have uh, a um we have our one of our pa partners from the lao pdr who would also like to share their insights. Do we have them connected? Uh, do we have Dr. Saikong Sinasin from Lao PDR? Okay, so um, I think um, he 
is currently just uh, out of his place. But uh, so while we wait for him, uh, I have a so again, thank you for the opening uh, discussion. So while we wait for our uh, partner from Laos, um, let me share with you a, num a couple of questions that we have collected from um, during the presentations and pre previous to the presentation. Uh, so le I would like to share with our, uh, our first question with Professor Park, and I think uh, our audience has found it ver uh, has found your. Oh, sorry. Um, I am very sorry to. Uh, go back and forth, but uh, I think we can uh, go back to our partner from Lao PDR to share their comments first. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Are you hear me? Yes, Hello? we can hear you perfectly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my sense of time for allowing me to join in this uh, conference. I uh, very appreciate that I can share and I can learn from the, our friend from several country uh, about the, uh, how to overcome the uh, COVID situation during the past uh, time. Uh, I do know that uh, all the uh, country in the world does affect, affect from the COVID-19 and also loud, loud too. Um, actually, uh, during the COVID-19, that's most of our institution and school has slowed to learning by face-to-face -face, and we continue to learn from uh, distance learning or by uh, e-learning or uh, by, by using on application that be available. But you know that uh, particularly we have very deep difficult difficulties with the uh, learning from the distance because uh, we have no experience about that. And when we participate to the uh, cyber university network for quite a long time, but uh, it's not all university in Laos involved to this project. Just only the national university of Laos who have quite had good experience on the uh, e-learning. So most of uh, our students and our teachers have faced difficulties. Uh, first thing that uh, the teacher lack, lack, lack of experience, how to prepare the course online and how to teach online. And the second thing, the student also uh, not family, how do you see? Because they, 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 they use to, to to, to learn from face to face. Now, they have to learn by themselves by using the uh, mobile phone or cell or any, any available. And the, 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 the second thing that we have difficulty to internet access for those who are living in the remote area in the countryside, uh, the, the, the internet access is very low. And in some cases, uh, the, they have to pay for internet uh, quite expensive. It's different with the other country. So that, uh, however, the government had made all the force to overcome this uh, difficult time and will look forward in the future. So the government tried to promote uh, encourage all the, 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 the stakeholder to to help our student, our teacher by providing the internet access even for uh, those who can provide the device for us, our student. So this uh as it's very, very difficult. Huh? And we are only hope that when we are uh, participate to this uh, project, Cyber GSD, we can can learn experience from our friends from Korea, Thailand, Vietnam, another country, that uh, how to together to over overcome the COVID-19. So uh, uh, thank you very much that uh, I learned a lot today. I uh, hear a lot and learn a lot from your presentation. Thank you very much. 
Um, so thank you again from the Laos Ministry of Education and Sports. So uh, going back to the points uh, mentioned and being iterated. So um, again, at the end of the day, I think um, it as uh, one of the um, participants uh, currently uh, implementing the ASEAN Cyber University project, it would be our um, ultimate wish uh, for the ACU OER platform to be, uh, to be able to serve the role um, as an alternative to, the, uh, to our ASEAN network who are still facing the issues of accessibility, lack of expertise, and lack of content. So uh, just to add a brief um, information, so this morning we had uh, a signing of partnership with a number of ASEAN countries which would um, decide that the ACU project would be implemented based on an online platform, the ACU OER platform. So in that t term, we hope that this platform could be continuously referred to for different partner countries um, as one of the uh, solutions that could perhaps help uh, our partner countries um, address the issues, again, of accessibility, um, lack of expertise on um, utilizing different contents, and again, the lack of content. So thank you again to all our participants. And, um, we do have questions, so uh, because we are running out of time, let me just ask a number of, uh, just a few questions. So again, um, going back to, uh, let me first go to Dr. Park. So again, the concept of smart log was very interesting for our audience. And uh, would let me read out the question. So thank you again for the presentation. So regarding this smart log, uh, um, model that you have shared with us. Uh, could you also kindly share with us one of your most successful smart log concept, uh, smart log experiences? What kinds of online and offline activities did you integrate and uh, what was some of the most uh, successful outcomes from the activities? And while you think about uh, the, while you organize your answers, let me also give out a question to Ms. Um, Esther Perez. Uh, as uh, as a continuous continuous online learner actively engaging in online activity, so what would you say? Uh, what would you s select as the most important feature for you uh, that would be necessary for you to as to assist you uh, to assist your successful online learning? So again, what do you think is the most important feature in an online learning environment? that would assist your successful online activities. So uh, if we could start with Dr. Park. Oh, thank you for your interest in small log model. Uh, one of the thing that I want to focus on was when you do the small log learning, like the model, small log teaching and education, you don't have to teach by yourself alone. You can use many resources person at the same time. When I teach future teachers, uh, I need the teachers who teach now. And then through Zoom, I call them and make set up the time I had. And so if I call them, they come in and they tell students what should be done when they are student and what will they do when they are student. And my student can ask them questions. And I teach in the uh, teacher t uh, education program. And at the same time, sometimes the medical school, my friend, I call and say, let's have joint class. Then medical school comes in, my student comes in, then they talk each other. So anyhow, medical school or teacher school of education, we handle person, human beings. So what's the difference? What are they doing? And those kind of things. And while I'm teaching sometimes, I turn on the MOOC program, even Harvard, wherever, if there is a wonderful lecture, then I just show my student for five minutes. And then it means I can teach with Harvard colleagues, right? So when you use this kind of MOOC program, then the, I mean the uh, smart log education model uh, paradigm, then really you can do many things. And at the same time, I can use others lecture and I can invite them or I can join together. Even when I teach, I may can teach with Philippine students. 
I call them together and we can talk each other. So this smile of paradigm is, means even though you teach offline with your student, at the same time, you can use a lot of online like edge tech technologies and all that kind of AI programs. So it will put you like the Iron Man. When you put the Iron Man suit, you can be Superman, right? So when we have this kind of all kind of AI programs and uh, as technologies, then a usual human being teacher can be a Superman style, Iron Man style teachers. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, Ms. Perez, Uh, sorry, your audio is a little bit unclear. Could you kindly repeat? Is it okay now? Oh, yes, no problem now. I think one of the most important aspects of an online learner is the constant and um, interactive for my and instructor. Um, as a student, I can't like I can't advance or further my knowledge without this without my teacher's validation. So if I can't receive validation or feedbacks from my instructors, um, what I do is my knowledge is just like stagnant. It it doesn't like advance or something. And um, from what I've experienced, um, the transition from the transition of mode of education from face-to-face -face classes to online learning, it, it limits the feedbacks uh, that the students receive from their instruction uh, instructors. So I think um, it's one of the most important aspects in online learning. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Paris. So uh, if, uh, if I were to integrate the two speakers' answers, I think um, the may the core point would be on the integration part integrating um, as dr park mentioned different disciplines from medicine to education and from according to Ms. Perez's answer integrating different feedbacks from different uh perhaps uh, not only the learner perhaps fellow colleagues or uh, any different any kind of resources on the online um, environment so thank you and um one question okay so let me move on let me quickly move on so um a question to dr jiang first so you mentioned earlier that you integrated the ACU OER platform with MS Teams. Is there a specific reason you chose MS Teams in among the different platforms? And what do you think was the most successful outcome in using the specific tool? And um, due to time constraints, uh, I would like to share one final question. This is an open question. I invite um, any um, speaker to share their insights. So the question is from, okay, hold on, let me read the question. I just have one question. Can you tell me the degree of adaptation to remote teaching and learning in the lower and upper grades? And I appreciate if anyone could share their experiences I am curious about young generation's adoption in Asia. And um, I think this is a rather wide question. So, um, but uh, considering that our topic is more focused on higher education, if you could also expand your um, answer to not only higher education, but also the entire education in general, that would also be wonderful. But if not, you could also just uh, focus on the higher education part. So please, uh, uh, may I start with Dr. Jiang? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, I think uh, the most difficult in online learning in COVID-19 is motivating students. Uh, in online class, uh, then uh, you can see the experience from Dr. Park, Dr. Huyen, and Dr. Una Chai about uh, how to motivate the student. Um, and I think uh, if we have a limitation to control students in synchronous online class, we should uh, prepare content in detail 
in an online course in a learning management system, uh, such as uh, ICN Cyber University Open Educational Resource LMS. So uh, it's the way we must the pilot class on ICU pilot class with the Microsoft Teams. And you can see Microsoft, we can use Microsoft Teams to make an uh, synchronous online class uh, to interact with each student directly. Uh, but uh, we have a limitation to control students in this class because students can uh, close the video and uh, have uh, another action when uh, we teach them. So uh, we should prepare the learning content uh, in an online course uh, from in a learning management system while they can study uh, when they have a time. And we have uh, an exam as a quiz test uh, in this uh, LMS for students to do uh, to, con to control the performance in learning process. And so uh, we think the blended class uh, for online learning in COVID-19 is the best um, for girls with the difficulty in COVID-19. Yes, that's okay. some of my experience. Thank you very much, Dr. G. Yeah, let me add one more thing. Oh, yes, please. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I made a term that weaknesses of online learning means who cannot learn online by themselves. It's the students from vulnerable classes and remote areas and underachieving students and low motivation students and K to three level students, kindergarten to third. In this kind of students case, uh, even though it's uh, online real time teaching and what, but they don't have motivation. They, they cannot understand what teachers do. So actually this kind of student need adult assistance beside them. So adult assistant, if there is no others who can help them, actually, even though they sit down, they cannot learn at all. So Korea case, when they shut down and try to open schools, at first they said, grade 12, they will open first. So I told them, no, it's not a good idea. We have often K to three students first because kindergarten, they cannot study, cannot do things home alone. And first lab, first graders also. So there is this kind of, uh, weaknesses of online learning. So we should focus on that. And this kind of student case really needs somebody to assist them. So what I suggest is uh, make the village level, like around five students gathered together, there's one others who help them, then maybe they can learn better, even though school shut down. So need that kind of systems. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would again like to invite if anybody would like to answer the open question that I shared earlier. Uh, can you tell me the degree of adaptation to remote teaching and learning in the lower and upper grades? So what do you mean by adaptation? I think um, from ha the way I understood the question, I think if you could tell if anybody in our presenter and panelists could share with us um, how um, to what level are the students um, use utilizing and using um, online teaching at online teaching in their um, classes. And so actually, uh, there is a difference, even though uh, elementary school students who are the online, the digital learners, if they are trained to learn through online and they are used to, they can do it. So we just think about teacher training, but we also should think about student training for digital learners. We think students knows about digital device very well, so they can learn from digital through the online, but actually I found out it's not true. They are digital consumers. They know how to play game, how to enjoy, how to watch video, but they don't know how to adjust and sit on and learn through the online program. So 
uh, we have to train them first, but we didn't think about training students. So maybe that's the most important thing we have to think about. Um, okay, thank you, Dr. Thank you again, Dr. Park. So uh, I think one of the most um, essential points that we have to remember again is that you know our um, the learners these days uh, the young the um, primary to higher education learners they are very uh, open to digital technologies and as a uh, they have been uh, with the digital technologies practically throughout their lives but that does not mean that they will also s effectively integrate that in their learning so again we need to make a difference between digital consumer and learner and this um, learning should be done uh, together between the instructor and student so um, I am sorry for uh, we have for the time constraints, uh, I would like to continue um, asking uh, uh, to continue discussing. But due to our time constraints, um, it is. I am very sorry to uh, call it uh, the end of today's conference. Uh, but again, um, this. Uh, so um, just to conclude, so 2021 has been a very um, transitioning year for the ASEAN Cyber University project. So uh, starting next. Uh, st starting 2022, our project will expand online. So we hope that uh, including the professional prof uh, professors and the experts who have joined us this afternoon, uh, we hope that this will be a starting uh, point for expanding different uh, interactions of uh, contents and insights for the successful implementation of the ASEAN Cyber University project. So with that, uh, let me call it the end of this uh, webinar, International Conference. So thank you to everyone, to thank you to each and everyone who have been with us this afternoon. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice yes. to we'll see, see you again. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you very Bye -bye. much.